Hey there, uh, how are you guys doing? Um, I wanted to record a little video here to talk about one of the concepts that I saw that people weren't very clear on on the exam. But apparently I have to be more careful about the way I give you guys feedback on the um, exams. The um, muckety mucks in Eli told me that uh, the video that I made after the last exam was basically a violation of Eli policy which um, how I stepped on their, their toes with that is, is I, I basically told you what the answers were to the exam. Now you guys have all taken the exam and so that is um, obviously not that big of a deal for you but they're worried about one of you essentially downloading that video and then keeping it and then sharing it with uh, other students down the line so that they know the answers to the exam. Which I guess is a fair point, but I uh, am sort of one of these people who trust people uh, rather than thinking, uh, you know, sort of structuring a whole class around the possibility that somebody might cheat. Um, and so I just made a lot more work for myself. I now have to make a brand new exam for exam one. Um, and um, you'll also see that video uh, uh, is no longer there. I've, I've deleted it um, based on the request from Eli. So um, let me take a different tact here with exam two. Um, it seemed like um, in general people did fine with this uh, exam, you know, sort of in general. I didn't see anything that was sort of glaring with the exception of the essay question on um, sedimentary particle size, uh, sorting, and rounding. Okay, so let's begin with uh, size, particle size. Um, actually, let's go to rounding. Um, rounding seems to be the thing that everybody had the easiest time keeping track of. So rounding is pretty clearly correlated to transport distance. Um, we can start a, a sedimentary particle off by breaking it off of some bedrock. It's very angular when it starts off. Um, and then as it travels further, it has the little sharp pieces broken off and it becomes increasingly rounder. Its original shape may have been more spherical or more oblate, but basically it becomes more rounded over time. Um, so you all got that and that was good. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, but uh, then I, a lot of you basically tried to make the other two um, questions uh, about uh, size and, and about sorting, also about transport distance, and that is not the case. The only one of these things that's about transport distance, whether it is a straight line distance from the mountains to the beach, or whether it is basically a looping path, you know, as waves wash a particle up the beach and back down the beach and up the beach and back down the beach, um, you know, the cumulative distance there is, is quite large. But it's only rounding that tells you anything about transport distance. Okay, so let's go on now and talk about um, sedimentary particle size. Okay, so now moving on to size. Sedimentary particle size does not tell you anything about transport distance. There are small particles and there are large particles, and they can both form at the site where the particles are being broken off from the bedrock, and they can both be transported a short distance, and they can both be transported a long distance. For instance, glaciers, you know, travel many, many uh, dozens of miles from their source area up in the mountains to where they end up dumping their sediment. And in many cases, they're transporting boulders that are the size of houses that entire distance. All right. So just because a particle is big, that doesn't mean it's close to its source. What it means is that something energetic moved it from its source to wherever it ended up. Sedimentary particle size tells you about how energetic the environment of deposition was. That's the key thing here, okay? So um, if you have a raging river in flood stage, it can move big particles. If you have a powerful glacier, it can move big particles. If you have a um, calm, placid lake, that cannot move big particles. So uh, only uh, the tiniest little particles are going to get out to the middle of that lake unless something really energetic happens, like say a volcano explodes and it hurls a boulder through the air. But barring energetic events, low energy environments will be recorded by small particles, all right? And high energy environments, whether it's slow moving like a glacier or fast moving like a river um, or really fast moving like a meteorite impact, that is basically going to produce um, much larger particle sizes. Sedimentary particle size tells you about environment of deposition, how energetic was it. Now let's move on to sorting. Uh, sorting is the last category uh, that we need to discuss in terms of the texture of sedimentary rocks. 
Sedimentary rocks could be poorly sorted or they could be well sorted. This is a measure of how much the grains uh, agree with one another in their size. Are they all about the same size, which is well sorted? Or are they um, a mixture of different sizes, which we call poorly sorted, like the example over here on the left? So basically, uh, a way of thinking of this is how uh, big is the biggest particle particle in a sample compared to the smallest particle? Are they about the same size, or is the biggest one thousands of times larger than the smallest one? That's what sorting is all about. And what this tells you is not about transport distance, not about the energy of environment, but how rapidly was the sediment deposited? Was it deposited gradually with certain particles in certain places corresponding to certain energies, or was it basically just dumped in one fell swoop? So think about a river carrying a bunch of different particles. And as this river slows down, it deposits the really big stuff in one place, the slightly smaller stuff in another place, the slightly smaller stuff still in another place, medium-sized stuff beyond that, small stuff beyond that, and really tiny stuff way out beyond that. Or is this like a flash flood where it picks up a whole bunch of stuff, courses along really quickly, and then kapow, just drops it all at once, all right? That's what particle size uh, sorting tells you, all right? So if it's dumped all at once, it's poorly sorted. If it's deposited progressively, we can call that winnowed out, and that basically gives you a well-sorted sedimentary rock. If you're not familiar, familiar with the term winnowed um, or winnowing, uh, it comes from the harvesting of wheat. Um, when people harvested wheat, they um, would want to separate the wheat from the chaff, uh, the little husk on the wheat grain, though that's perfectly good for keeping you good and regular, it's not nutrition. And so basically uh, people wanted to get all that extra fiber out of the wheat. So they basically slightly crush the wheat, that breaks the little husks off, then they toss it in the air in a, in a calm breeze. And the breeze strips away the little lightweight husks, but it leaves behind the denser wheat grains. All right, so then that wheat is capable of being, say, ground into flour and turned into bread or made into noodles or, or whatever, but it doesn't have all that extra fibrous husk around it. So that's where winnowing comes from. Sedimentary particles undergo the same thing when they're in streams, all right, and that stream basically strips away the small stuff and leaves the bigger stuff behind. Uh, if that stream current is maintained over a long period of time at a relatively constant rate, you'll get that winnowing, and you'll end up with well-sorted sedimentary deposits. The big stuff in one place, the medium-sized stuff somewhere else, and the really small stuff somewhere beyond that. So that's what sorting tells you. It tells you about how progressively the sediment was deposited. Sedimentary particle size tells you about the energy uh, that the sediment was deposited under, the energy regime, and then, of course, rounding correlates to transport distance. Three different textural features telling you three different features or three, three different things about the history of that particular package of sediment. I hope that clears it up for you guys. I'm happy to do videos like this talking about concepts about any concept in the class. So if you have anything you want me to talk about in more detail like this, go ahead and shoot me a note and I'll be happy to record that video. I'm just not allowed to talk about specific questions and specific answers on the exam. Okay, thanks. Bye.